everyone. In my first unboxing video, I opened up some equipment that we use in the chem lab. In this video, I'm gonna be unboxing some chemicals. So let's get to it. So this box comes with a big sticker on the side and it's that diamond shaped sticker that we use in chemistry to denote that there's chemicals. So we're getting to some of the good stuff here and I'm very excited about that to see what kind of chemicals we ended up getting. Oh yes, there's definitely some chemicals in here. Let's check it out. So in, so in this batch of chemicals, we got a couple of solid acids. Um, a lot of people are surprised to learn that some, a lot of acids are actually solids instead of liquids. Uh, here we have some citric acid. We have two bottles of that. And quick little pro tip for any of you following along. Um, there's the formula of citric acid and right next to it, usually on the bottle, they will put the molecular weight or the formula weight. Sometimes you might call it the molar mass. And it's usually right on the bottle. So it saves you a lot of time calculating these things if you know that it's on the bottle and you can just take a quick look at it. And some hazard alerts here, some other alerts on the side. You always wanna read those. Um, great, so there's some citric acid. We also have some oxalic acid, and this is a dihydrate. <clears throat> so you'll see in the formula, there's the formula for acetic or oxalic acid and the dihydrate part, there's water actually stuck in there. Its formula weight is there, again, the hazards, and they're pretty consistent as to where they put all the information. So one of our jobs as chemists is to get used to reading the labels of those bottles and making sure that we're doing things that are appropriate with them. Next, we have a couple of bottles of sodium bisulfite. This is also a weak acid. A lot of people don't know that right off the bat and it's kind of hidden because the word acid is not in here, but bisulfite ion is actually slightly acidic in, um, in solution. We needed some iron three nitrate. So you'll be learning if you don't know yet uh, what that Roman numeral three means. And we'll be learning how to write formulas for things. This is a nona hydrate, which is nine waters stuck in their per formula unit. And we have some lead nitrate, comes in a smaller bottle. This is actually surprisingly hefty. This is a 500 gram bottle of lead nitrate. For comparison, this is a 500 gram uh, bottle of citric acid. It's much bigger, this is much more dense, and so you get a lot more weight into a smaller volume. Um, so that again is surprisingly heavy. Another one that is surprisingly heavy is this one. This is silver nitrate. And this also is only 100 grams, but again, it's surprisingly heavy. Um, there's actually not a lot of stuff in here. It's really mostly down at the bottom. They gave a pretty big bottle for that, but most of the bottle is empty like this. We'll keep going with some malonic acid. So they put a lot of the solid acids in the same box, which kind of makes sense. Uh, we have four of these bottles of 25 grams each. I use these for some redox reactions and some demos. Uh, later in the year, probably mid-year or so, so malonic acid. These are also light sensitive, so they come in these brown bottles so that light can't get in there and, you know, react with it or cause it to decay or degrade in any kind of way. So we'll put these off to the side. Finally, you may have noticed some Alka-Seltzer. And here, yes, we can actually order it through our scientific companies or you could just go to the drugstore and buy it. But we use Alka-Seltzer, these wonderful little tablets for some of our chem labs because they do a lot of cool acid-base reactions. And we do a lab with that where we measure it before and after, and we measure the gas that comes off, and you know that Alka-Seltzer fizzes and that kind of thing. So there you have it. Oof, this one's a heavy one. And just like the other one, it's got the diamond on the side, so that means more chemicals. Let's get to it. Starting with the largest bottle first, we have this one, which has a fancy name, sucrose but if you read underneath it, it's basically white cane sugar. So it's the same stuff you'd buy in the grocery store with a fancier label, and we'll use this for a couple of fun demos throughout the year as well. After that is some copper two sulfate. We have three bottles of this. You'll again note that it, it has like a blue color to it because copper salts typically have blue or green colors to them. And this one, ooh, look at these beautiful large crystals of copper two sulfate. So let's all enjoy that for a second. That's fantastic. And also in this package, we have some calcium carbonate, which is finely white powdered. Basically it's chalk 
and you can see it's calcium carbonate, about 100 grams per mole, and this is a 500 gram bottle. We got three of those. Some magnesium oxide. Again, you can kind of see it. It's another white powder in there. This powder tends to get everywhere, all over the lab. So you can see there's like a little smoke, like powdery smoke coming out of that thing. We use that a lot. So we got three bottles of that. Some more solid acids. This one, have, these two happen to be salicylic acid. You may have heard of that. They put it in um, cosmetics and a lot of things to help with acne and other, other things. Um, you could also use this as we do to make aspirin, which is acetyl salicylic acid. But this is a 500 gram bottle. We were running low on that, so we got two more 500 gram bottles. Benzoic acid, I wanted to get some of these. We don't actually have any of this yet until now. Um, but I put it on the list last spring because I really wanted to do something with it and we're gonna make some esters with it. You can make some pretty nice smelling compounds with benzoic acid. And then we have some dichlorobenzene. P, P stands for paradichlorobenzene. And it's related to a whole series of chemicals, one of the, which you might recognize the smell of. I don't know if you can smell that. It smells a little bit like mothballs and dichlorobenzene is actually one of the components of mothballs along with its more offensive cousin, naphthalene, which we also have some of that, but I didn't order any more of that because uh, we don't need any more of that. Some potassium bromide, which we'll use for a couple of demos this year. It's just potassium and bromine, formula weight of 119. And that's a 500 gram bottle of that as well. Okay, so after removing the bubble wrap, that was fantastic by the way, um, we have these uh, two bottles of pentane, these are 100 milliliters each. Pentane, you can kind of see in there is a liquid, again, in one of these brown bottles. Pentane is a hydrocarbon made of five carbons, chains, and it happens to be a liquid at room temperature, and so we have these liquids here. So these are simple hydrocarbons. Some sodium bicarbonate, also known as sodium hydrogen carbonate or baking soda. This is a two kilogram bottle. We go through a lot of this stuff, and we got a couple of those. So here's a smaller box and it has some smaller bottles in it. And let's see what we got. These two reddish ones, I knew right off the bat, those were gonna be iron oxide. And this is basically rust. You can kind of tell the color of it through the plastic, but let's take off the cap just so we can all enjoy the color of just pure rust in there. Uh, we'll use that for some thermite probably, which is fantastic. Um, we also have some powdered aluminum, which is the other half of thermite. Well, not half, but if you get technical about it, but the other component you need to make some thermite. We did a lot of that last year, so we're gonna have to do uh, replenish our stocks for this year. And here we have some copper two oxide. I've got four bottles of that. And this is another oxide. All three of these were oxide compounds. They like to ship them in sort of groups that are sort of similar to each other. So this is the oxide box and copper two oxide, which I use to make a sort of Thermite's evil cousin, and I'll uh, try to post a link to that video in the description as well. That was fantastic. Something I've never tried before. And one more of these smaller boxes with the diamond on the side, which tells me there's probably chemicals in here. So let's get rid of that. Oh, look, look, all of this entire box for one small bottle of iodine, which is put into this. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this is fantastic. I love the, the bubble wrap. We'll try to unwrap this a little bit. Apologies for the very loud bubbling. You can see there's a little bit of staining going on because the iodine is kind of volatile and the iodine vapor does tend to stain things. So let's get that out of container. And there we have some iodine, which we ran out of a little bit last year. So here we go with some fresh iodine and bubble wrap. Sometimes chemicals come in very small quantities, um, maybe because it's pretty rare or you just don't need a lot. This is actually only a five gram sample of something called 110 phenanthrolene, which is really fun to say. Here's the formula and its weight and um, some other information about it. One of the, so if you've been paying attention in chemistry class, you know that one of the biggest benefits of taking chemistry and understanding chemistry is to be able to speak chemistry and say fun names of chemicals like 
iron three oxide or manganese four sulfide or 110 phenanthylene or phenethylene, dihydrophthalazine. I mean, the list goes on. And if you're able to sort of drop names like that, say at a party or at a crowd, or if you're trying to impress that certain someone who you want to ask to prom, then you can just drop some cool chemistry names and you're, you're good to go. Now, some chemicals are extra frightening and they can't just be shipped in any old container. Um, I have an example of one here. This is concentrated acetic acid and it's two and a half liters of it. It is, as the label suggests, corrosive and flammable. So double whammy there. It's also very concentrated. It's almost pure acetic acid. And if you're not careful, things could seriously go wrong here. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpack this thing and I'll show you what it, uh, what's inside. So the way they typically ship these acids and reagents like this is they have these bottles, which are usually coated in plastic. So another safeguard, so if you drop it, the glass won't shatter into a thousand pieces and go everywhere. Um, they usually have a color-coded cap on it. This brown indicates acetic acid. And it is packed inside this styrofoam shell, so it doesn't move inside the box, which is packed inside of a plastic bag, which is sealed, which is now packed inside the box here. So multiple layers of uh, safety um, packed into this box because this is really nasty stuff and we really want to be careful with it. So good job guys. This one only has a flammable sticker on it as opposed to corrosive and flammable. This one's only flammable. These two are both bottles of ethanol and, yep, that's right, ethanol. And uh, otherwise known as ethyl alcohol. And we have two bottles of this because we use this quite a bit, not for drinking, of course, but for doing things like burning and dissolving and other really cool things that you can do in the chem lab. Wow. Now, you know it's getting real when it says oxidizer and corrosive on the same box. Now, these two were, now these were two bottles of hydrogen peroxide. And you might have heard of hydrogen peroxide. You can actually buy it at places like, you know, the drugstore and so on. It's not quite the same stuff. The stuff you buy in the grocery store um, or the drugstore is usually about 3%. So 3% hydrogen peroxide and 97% water. This is 10 times that, this is 30%. So this comes in its own special packaging as well. Um, you wanna be careful of this. And it also comes in these brown bottles so that the light doesn't get to it uh, as well. So. And over here we have uh, our assortment of chemicals, starting with some of the smaller bottles we started with, our Alka-Seltzer, and moving towards some of the larger bottles over here, and finishing across the sink with our concentrated acetic acid and our flammable ethanol. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Unboxing Chemical Supplies. Thanks for watching.